Uh, you know, I always like to kind of challenge people by telling them that the first thing you need to know about Jewish prayer is there's no such thing. Jews don't pray. Now, people get very annoyed with me. What do you mean Jews don't pray? They go to synagogue. The word to pray is an English word. And Moses didn't speak English, and you won't find the word prayer in the Torah and the Bible because the Torah is written in Hebrew. What is it that we aspire to do? It's something called lehit palel. And lehit palel has its own definition, and it's not to pray. Lehit palel, first of all, in Hebrew, uh, words, verbs can be conjugated differently. A verb in relationship to someone else is different than a verb in relation to myself. So if I'm going to dress my son, then in Hebrew I would say, ani malbish. If I'm going to dress myself in Hebrew, I would say, ani mit labesh. So that T sound, mit labesh, indicates that this is an act which is reflexive. So the word lehit palel already tells me something. The act that we do in a synagogue when we open up our sidurim is lehit palel. Meaning, I'm not trying to change God, I'm trying to change myself. But what am I trying to change about myself? I'm trying to palel myself. So the question is, let's find out what originally the word palel means. And if you look in the Torah, you will find that the word palel is used. When Joseph comes to his father, Jacob, and asks for blessings for his two sons, Ephraim and Menashe, the grandsons of Jacob. And imagine how emotionally charged this moment is when Jacob realizes that he thought his son Joseph was dead. And now, not only did he come back to Joseph, but he's able to see his grandchildren. And Yaakov says, Jacob says, Lo palalti, that I would have ever seen your face. And now I've been graced to see the face of your children. So Rashi, the great commentary, explains what does palel mean? It means to fill my heart to think the thoughts. In other words, lehit palel means an intentional act of filling my heart to think the thoughts, to dream the dreams, to anticipate the, 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 the unimaginable and yet to imagine it nonetheless. In other words, lehit palel is an exercise of vision and imagination. It's an exercise of filling my heart to think the thoughts there's a story about how Napoleon in Paris walked by a synagogue during Tisha B'Av, which is the day that the Jewish people mourn the destruction of the temple. Napoleon, not knowing anything about like Jewish history, so the story goes, asked a fellow outside, what are those Jews doing in there? Why are they crying? Why are they moaning? So the fellow said, well, today is Tisha B'Av, the ninth of Av, and they are mourning over the destruction of the temple. Apparently, Napoleon didn't know much about Jewish history, and he said, well, when was, when did it, when was it destroyed? And the fellow said, oh, about 2,000 years ago. And Napoleon said, and they're still crying, and they're still mourning, and they're still yearning for its construction? And he said, that people will survive. Now, I don't know if this is a just story that actually happened, but I can guarantee you it's a true story. We are visionaries. And therefore, the act, when a person goes to synagogue, what they're basically doing is a self-induced experience of envisioning peace in the world redemption in the world, livelihood, health. And that's why the leader of the service is called a chazan. What does chazan mean? It has nothing to do with singing. Singing in Hebrew would be a zamar. Chazan comes from the word chazon, which means to envision. And therefore, the leader of that service in synagogue is going to lead us in a collective exercise of visionary thinking. And we're going to present that to the master of the world. And we're going to say, please, master the universe. May we align our vision with your vision. May we be a mouthpiece for your prayers, for your vision to come into the world. And that's why it's called a service. It's so strange. Why would prayer be a service? Because it's not prayer. It's not about me begging God, please change your mind. We're not trying to change God's mind. We're trying to change ourselves, And we're trying to channel God's prayer, God's will and God's vision into the world. And that's actually our responsibility and the power that God has in fact trust, entrusted us with so that together we would be a tool, a vehicle for God's prayer to become actualized in the world.